This game preview is brought to you by Manscaped's Premium Ultra Soft Boxer Briefs 2.0. Complete with the all new jewel pouch to protect your stones. Use the promo code SACCITY for 20% off and free worldwide shipping. Manscaped, the perfect tools to protect your jewels. Detroit Lions traveling to Minnesota to take on the Minnesota Vikings, who are six point favorites over the Lions with a 53 and a half over under in this game. The Lions have been impressing teams or impressing people so far with their heart, their will, their grind. They beat the Commanders last week. They are one and one. The Vikings, on the other hand, uh, are in a situation where they had a great week one against the Green Bay Packers and then had a nice little letdown in week two against the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Let's start off on the on the Lions side of things, though, and talk about how impressive they have been. Um, not flashy again, not just blowing people out of the water and that kind of stuff, but they've been competitive. They've won a football game. They've looked pretty good at times led by Amon Ross St. Brown, who has been absolutely dominant in the wide receiver game, helping a lot of people in fantasy as well. Um, he has been having a very, very good season. Aaron with what Amon Ross St. Brown has been doing in this, in the league uh, this year, where does he, where are we starting to rank Amon Ross St. Brown amongst the, the wider receivers uh, in this league right now? He's been red hot, currently tied for the longest streak of eight plus receptions in a game. He's been very good. Where does he rank? Um, oh, this is, is this a trick question? Uh, it's not. Like as a wide receiver? As a wide receiver, yeah. Yeah. Like where, where, like where is he? Is he? Is he like start? Is he creeping up on the top ten? Is he like where, where, where are you having him as opposed to where you had him last season? Well, we all know I rank wide receivers really differently than most people, so I'm going to be honest. He's not even inside my top twenty from a wide receiver standpoint. From a production standpoint, if we're talking fantasy and argument there, yeah, he's probably a wide receiver two at this point. And the way things are going, he probably might be able to jump into the wide receiver one category. But this is very similar to the Cooper Cup argument that I would make still. Um, if we are talking about physical attributes and the ability to play the wide receiver position, there are guys out there that are not as productive because of situation that are far better at wide receiver. If I had to choose between Terry McLaurin and Amonra St. Brown, I'm taking Terry McLaurin. Like that's from a football aspect. Again, I'm not knocking them on Rasey Brown. It's just what it is from a skill set perspective. Um, but they have done a good job of getting him the football and in, in ways that really is very, very creative. The Detroit Lions offense is one of the more creative offenses in the NFL right now. And I know that sounds crazy, but let's talk about what they've done through two games. 35 points a game, over 400 yards of offense, uh, 400 yards of offense in, in those two games. And that's with Jared Goff. This is not a quarterback that we looked at. We say slings it around and, and I get it. They, they have a great offensive line and the running game is good. So Ben Johnson has done a good job of being creative in that offense to get his skilled players the ball. And we talk about this with the Miami Dolphins and Mike McDaniels. When you do that, when you get DeAndre Swift, when you get Amon Ross St. Brown the ball, because of their attributes as a player, good things are going to happen. He, Amon Ross St. Brown is excellent after the catch. And He's shown that. So they get him reverses. They get him bubble screens. They get him, they get him in space and he's able to create plays. And I think that's what's so impressive about this Lions offense. If you're a defense, you have your hands full with this offense. I could only imagine what this would look like with a you know, franchise guy at quarterback. Don't be dis disrespecting Jared Goff, okay? He's been good. He's been good. Not I didn't great. say he wasn't good. I just said I, know, I didn't I know, say I he hasn't been good. He's just not a franchise I quarterback. I know. On the Vikings side of things, we've seen two different types of Vikings uh, teams in the first two weeks with a win over Green Bay and the loss against the Philadelphia Eagles. Aaron, what, where are we at with the Minnesota Vikings? What do you think we've learned so far with this team? Um, I'm still worried about their defense, the way they played against Philadelphia. This is going to be a test. You know why? Because I think this is the perfect matchup for what I, I need to see to gauge where Minnesota is at. I know it sounds crazy because it's the Detroit Lions and they could go in there and beat them, beat them up. But Detroit's offense is formidable. It's one of the better offenses in football, despite what anybody thinks. So you have to, your defense that we, your defense that we have questions about will have to go against another good offense. Will they be able to slow down Detroit? Will they be able to stop Detroit's offense? And then on the other end, a Minnesota offense that was good week one, but bad week two against a questionable Philly defense, at least questions from my part, is going up against a bad Detroit Lions defense. So 
you have your defense that's bad going against a good offense and your uh, a defense on Detroit side that's bad against your good offense. What are you going to do? Like that, this is going to tell me a lot about where Minnesota is going forward. I do expect them to win this game, but if this game is 38, 35, they are right exactly where I thought they'd be a good offense with a bad defense. And I have serious concerns about them going forward, but if they, if they can come ha- somehow come in here and win 31, 14 or you know, even 28 to, to 17 and, and hold that Detroit offense where they look like they actually know what they're doing defensively, especially on the back end. Um, I, I think I'll be a little bit more impressed, but I just want to remind people, this is exactly what I told you was going to happen with Kevin O'Connell. Does Minnesota's team look special? Do they look different on offense? Do they, do, what looks special about them to anybody? Like everybody saw Kevin O'Connell coming in. What looks different? I, I, I'm curious. I really am. Well, I don't know I th- what looks I think- different. I, I I I think I agreed with your point in the off season about about this team that like the problem was never the offense and that's what Kevin O'Connell was like to, like everyone was hyped about him coming in and, and helping this offense out but there really wasn't problems with the offense it's this defense and if they can get it all together then they'd be a team to be to be worried about um, but we haven't seen like the like the offense still it, to me the, through two weeks the offense still looks the same as they did last year. Um, and it's just this defense that needs to start taking those uh, little steps, the, those They're steps. They're averaging 15 better. points a game through two weeks. I'd like to know what they were averaging last week or last year on around this time. Um, I guarantee it was more than 15 points a game. Matter yeah. In fact, I have that number right here. I have that number right here. Points per game in, in 2021. Oh, they, they definitely finished higher. Oh, they wanted to get out oh, you son of a mother. You, <laughs> they, you know, they love to go back to 2022 every time you bring up a new screen. So through two weeks last year, they played Cincinnati and Arizona, lost two close games, one in overtime, one to Arizona, 34, 33. Uh, they had, they were averaging almost 30 points a game. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's for, cousin two for 350 yards week one. Last yes. Year. He did. He had a good week one this year. Like it's, it's very similar because they have great offensive players. We, and, and so all they do now is instead of running a fullback or an extra tight end, they run with three wide receiver sets. And they do a little bit more creative stuff on offense. But the results are not different. And that's the problem. That's what I was trying to tell everybody. Like, this is not going to come in and change the what Minnesota does offensively. They're a good offense. Yeah. The, I And with that, I am going with the Vikings uh, 28-24 in this game. I think the Lions still good, a good team. They're going to battle it out to the end, uh, but it'll be the Vikings winning this one at home, 28-24. There's no way this game is 28-24. There's going to be so much more scoring because Detroit's defense is really bad, and Minnesota's defense is not going to be able to stop Detroit. This is a week one Philadelphia Eagles-style game. Uh, Detroit and Minnesota will both score over 30 here. I say 35-30 Minnesota. Okay, 35-30 Minnesota. AJ has the Vikings 27-21. And Dylan has the Vikings as well. 